Welcome to the seventh part of my Adobe Lightroom Classic Masterclass. We have now finished creating the look for our image and now it is time to remove some unwanted objects from our photos. There are two tools in Lightroom. One is the red eye correction tool and one is the healing tool. And we'll start off with the more useful one, which is the healing tool. So you can find that in the middle of the toolbar here that looks like a bandage. Now under the healing tool, you have three different options. You've got the content aware remove tool, you've got the heal tool and the clone tool. All of these tools can do pretty much the same thing, but they just do it in a different way. So you you might get a bit different results with each of the tool. Now with all of the three tools you can change the size and the opacity which is the size of the brush and the opacity of the new layer that you create with these tools and with the clone tool and the healing tool you can also change the feather of the brush. Now you can also change the size and the feather by scrolling on your mouse wheel or by holding down shift and scrolling on your mouse wheel. Now with the opacity, if you for example want to remove wrinkles from the face of a person but you don't want to remove fully the whole wrinkle but you just want to make it a little less visible, you can use the opacity slider to let the original image push through a bit to the newly created layer. Now let's start off with the content aware remove tool. Now this tool uses AI to scan the image and then create new pixels around the area that you've selected. So for example, let's paint over this thing here and we can see that now it's gone. So basically the only thing you need to do is paint over the part of the image that you want to remove and Lightroom will do the rest of the job for you. Sometimes Lightroom may do a very bad job with selecting the area that it will use to create those new pixels to remove the object that you want to remove, but you can help Lightroom by telling where you want it to look for those new pixels. So for example, if we would remove this boat right here, now this time Lightroom did an amazing job, but if it would have failed, I could just click on the selection that I have, then hold down command on a Mac or control on Windows, and then draw a box around the area that I want Lightroom to use for the sample for the new area that it creates. So when I let go, Lightroom will reanalyze the image from the area that I selected and create those new pixels based on what I selected. So that might help Lightroom create a better removal of the object. So that is it for the content aware remove tool. Next up we have the healing tool and the cloning tool. And I'll talk about them together because the way you use them is actually exactly the same. So with either of the tools, you can just paint on the object that you want to erase and Lightroom will pick a part from the image and then sample that part on top of the area that you selected. Now in order to change where Lightroom samples from, you can just take this sampled area and drag it wherever you want it to sample from. And the cloning tool works exactly the same way. So let's just remove this both from here as well. And then we can drag the sampled area somewhere else. Now, both the cloning tool and the healing tool copy the area that they sample from to the area that you painted on, but they do it in a different way. So the healing tool is a little bit smarter because it will actually look at the brightness and the colors of the area that you painted on and actually actually match those colors and that brightness to the area that it samples from, whereas the cloning tool will directly copy the part that it samples from. So for example, if we paint away these two boats with the cloning tool and then move our selection to the city here, this is obviously something you would never do, but this is just to show you how they work. So we're basically copying this part of the image straight onto the boat. But if we switch this to the healing tool, we're now actually changing the colors of this sampled city area to match the colors of this sea. But obviously you would want to sample from an area that is similar to the area that you're painting on. Now looking at this example, it seems like the healing tool is a lot better than the cloning tool. And usually it actually is, but sometimes it does some weird things with the photo. So the cloning tool might come in handy if it does that. Now Lightroom really is not made for photo manipulation like this, but these tools are extremely powerful. However, if they don't get the job done, you can jump into Photoshop straight from Lightroom. So just right click on your image and choose edit in and then edit in Adobe Photoshop. And this will take you straight into Adobe Photoshop with a copy of your image that you have edited in Lightroom. And then you can do all the manipulations you need to do inside of Photoshop without affecting the original image that is inside of Lightroom. So even though you can erase objects from images in Lightroom, it might not be the perfect tool for the job, but Photoshop might be the better option. But let's move on to the red eye correction tool. Now the reason you would get red eyes in a photo is if the flash that is built into your camera fires in a dark environment, it will light up the pupil in the person's eye. Now this light will actually light up the blood that is inside the pupil, making the eye appear red. Now this also requires for the person to look straight at the camera so that the flash can really fire inside to their eye. And this is something you really should never get in your photos because if you're firing a flash straight from the camera to the person's face, 
you're already doing something a bit wrong unless of course that is the look you're going for but usually that doesn't look really good unless it's a special effect that you want to have with your photos. So after really starting to learn photography I have never had red eyes in my photos and have never ever used the red eye correction tool in Lightroom because I don't have to because I know how to avoid getting red eyes in my photos in the first place which is something you should do as well. Now with all of this being said if you do get red eyes in your photos it's extremely easy to correct them in Lightroom so just select the red eye correction tool click on the red eye here and then hover over your image now tweak this crosshair to be about the size of your eye and just click and Lightroom will do the rest of the job for you. Now Lightroom actually thinks I have a red eye here even though I obviously don't but the way this works is it will just darken the red parts inside the eye. And if you need to you can further tweak the pupil size and the darkening amount that Lightroom adds. Now you also have a pet eye correction tool here so if we go to an image of a cat and use the pet eye here we can just click on the eye and then Lightroom will do its job. Now once again obviously I don't have a red eye here so it will just darken the entire eye which is obviously not something I would want to do. And in here you also have an add catch light option so that will add the bright reflection of a light source back into the eye. But that is all for the correction tools inside of Lightroom so now you know how to erase objects from your photos and correct red eyes if you ever need to. And as I said before even though Photoshop is the way to go with erasing objects from your images Lightroom is actually very very powerful with these erasing tools as well so if there's just some small things that you need to take out of your image Lightroom will most likely do the job just perfectly for you. But now we have actually finished editing the photos so in the next part of this masterclass I will show you how you can export the photos out of Lightroom. So I'll see you in the next one.